events in the Persian Gulf and around the world, watch tomorrow morning on Today. Live from Chicago's NBC5, this is NBC5 News at 6. The reason we closed the airport now is a fear about all those airplanes coming so close to so many people in the downtown area. Tonight's top story, Mayor Daly's middle-of-the-night move to close Meg's Field, citing concerns over possible terrorist attacks. An, accuse, an excuse, rather, critics say that just doesn't fly. Good evening, I'm Marion Brooks, in for Allison Rosati. And I'm Warner Saunders. Critics are blasting Mayor Daly, claiming he's using post-9-11 fears to get what he really wants, a lakefront park. Tonight, we'll hear from those upset at the mayor's move, including pilots who've now found themselves grounded. We begin our coverage with the mayor and his announcement from NBC5's political editor, Dick Kay. Marin and Warner aircraft owners and pilots spokesmen say they have asked the FAA to take action against the city for what they say was Mayor Daley's sneaky action to close Miggs Field. The mayor dug up the runways at the lakefront airport when no one was noticing, not even the FAA. The mayor said he wanted to make the city safe from terrorism. It was quite a sight. Bulldozers, backhoes, and other heavy equipment rolling through the loop just before midnight under police escort. Their destination was Miggs Field, where, under orders from Mayor Daly, they began digging ditches and X's in the cement runways. Daly said he ordered the airport shut down to protect the city, but admitted there have been no specific threats. There has been no specific threat. As mayor of the city of Chicago, public safety is one of my primary responsibilities. I take it very seriously. I am not willing to wait for a tragedy, as some have asked me to do, to happen before making a very difficult and tough decision. The destruction of runways left 16 aircraft stranded at the airport. The mayor says the city will reimburse owners for removal of the planes. Daly destroyed the runways at midnight to do an end run around lawsuits and court delays. To do this any other way would have been needlessly contentious and jeopardize public safety, prolong anxiety among Chicagoans for months and maybe even years. The mayor and Governor George Ryan agreed in 99 to keep MIGs open till 2006 or maybe 25 years in exchange for federal legislation to expand O'Hare. Daly said when the O'Hare deal stalled in Congress, the MIGs deal was dead. No, no, the agreement is gone. The agreement is not in existence. There's no federal legislation. The Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association President Phil Boyer said, Mayor Daley has no honor and his word has no value. The sneaky way he did this shows he knows it was wrong. AOPA has asked the FAA to intervene and says it's considering new legal action. The FAA has made no decision but issued a statement saying removing any centrally located airport, such as MIGS, puts added pressure on O'Hare and Midway airports. The FAA must provide notices to airmen of any airport changes. And there are regulations which say if you deactivate a runway or airport, you should give 90 days notice, 30 days in case of instrument approach procedure, and MIGS has that, and in an emergency, notice as soon as possible. Mayor Daley waited till it was done to tell the FAA. AOPA wants him fined, and not a single congressman or politician will weigh in except Governor Blagojevich, who says he supports it. Wow, this is a big development. So there could be, could there be some sort of fine? I think there will be repercussions in Washington with the legislation that is, in fact, still pending under Lipinski and uh, Durbin's bill. And uh, now maybe it will be up to the state of Illinois to expand O'Hare. All right, thanks a lot, Dick. We'll be watching. And the moment that Megs was closed, criticism came flying toward the mayor. NBC5's Amy Jacobson continues our coverage now live from Megs Field, where pilots are finding themselves with nowhere to go. Amy? Mary, and many of the pilots are here in Chicago for a cardiology conference. And when they came to Megs Field this afternoon hoping to fly home, well, they had some choice words for our mayor. You have a very interesting mayor. It's about the nicest thing Tom Comer can say about Mayor Daley. He's here from North Carolina. That's his Cessna. Both are stuck. It seems rather strange that someone would do something like this without even notifying anybody who is parked here, knowing that couldn't get out. Many are calling it a covert operation. Crews coming in at night, carving huge X's into the runway. By morning's light, you can see the huge piles of asphalt. Frustrations mounting. 
Jason Johnson works for a billboard company flying in and out of Meg's on a weekly basis. I'm outraged as to Mayor Daly's actions. Uh, for him to do this in the middle of the night is uh, deplorable. Well, what happened today was vandalism. The friends of Meg's field simply disgusted. They say Meg's is an asset to Homeland Security. They screen people going into the airport and they also screen people going out onto the airport uh, ramp. Uh, that isn't done at most general aviation airports. As for the pilots, they're hoping the FAA will allow them to use the taxi runway. If not, the mayor says he'll pay for all 16 airplanes to be towed to Midway. This is the first time I've flown in here. Uh, I, I thought it would be, I've wanted to fly into here for a number of years, and I thought it would be a lot of fun. And it was, it was a lot of fun to land. Uh, I'm just sorry that I got caught up in this unfortunate situation. And if the planes are towed, it could cost the city taxpayers thousands of dollars. Now, I spoke with one Chicago area doctor whose plane is stuck here at Meg's Field. He had a great idea. He said, why didn't the mayor just put snow plows onto the runway instead of tearing up an airstrip that has been a part of Chicago since 1948? Reporting live from Meg's Field, Amy Jacobson, NBC5 News. Amy, thank you. Closing Meg's Field, Mayor Daly says, is an issue of public safety. So, do those working and living in Chicago's high-rises feel safer now? NBC5's Jennifer Mitchell now joins us live from near Sears Tower with more on that part of the story. Jennifer. Well, Warner, the handful of people that we were able to talk to who live and work downtown are simply thrilled about this decision. And a security expert tonight says when it comes to potential acts of terrorism, we have one less thing to worry about. The decision to close Meg's Field getting a thumbs up from many who work in the Sears Tower. Others who live in high rises say some of their concerns now put to rest. I'm so afraid I live in one of those high rise buildings and I'm always scared that the airplanes are coming towards us. With some of the tallest buildings in the country potential targets for terrorism, security expert Larry Doria applauds the decision. Uh, I'm very happy to see that he's proactive uh, instead of being reactive uh, to a possible terrorist situation. He says the decision comes at an important time. Anytime we take away uh, the possibility of terrorism, I think is a good thing. This man who lives in Lake Point Tower says it not only makes good sense security-wise, but economically as well. I don't see any reason to keep it open. It makes more sense to close it and have, you know, less likely of an event of a terrorist attack. Now, of course, some who pilot private planes do not agree at all with this decision. Other people say they are surprised it didn't happen much earlier. We are live down near Sears Tower. Jennifer Mitchell, NBC5 News. Thanks, Jennifer. Next on NBC5, the war with Iraq, including coalition gunfire at a checkpoint that left seven Iraqi women and children dead. Plus.